I think the best thing about Cohen, get a little Mets baseball here. Uh, I got something on Judge after as well. But right now for the Mets, the best thing about Stevie Cohen, well, there's two things. Number mm-hmm. one, he's truly a Mets fan. And 1A, or you can flip those, he's got more money than anybody that we know. Yep. So he can do whatever he wants. They're creating rules to... Uh, you know, to to try to stifle his his wealth, he just circumvents it by saying, "That's fine. Here's another check, another right. check, another check, another check." Just money. If you're just gonna charge me money, that means nothing. Uh huh. <laughs> Could always make it back. Exactly. Okay, so there's nothing bad about Stevie Cohen yet at all. Uh, he's been aggressive. He's connected to the hearts of Met fans. He has righted some wrongs. You know, numbers that weren't retired, things that needed to be done at City Field, the Tom Seaver statue. Outside of winning a World Series, grand slam home run since day one for Stevie Cohen. We yep. agree? Yep. Okay. Uh, and and I think it's going to remain that way, hopefully for a long time. I think he's going to be great here. Now, eventually you have to win a championship or, or the edict from two years ago becomes stale and eventually it's, it's repurposed mm-hmm. and it resurfaces and it's held against you. That's not happening anytime soon. Met fans are enthralled with their owner. They should be. But as I look at Steven, I, I generally don't know if I'm stating or asking. So I'm, I'm going to actually ask this. Is there even the slightest concern on your part that he might, at the end of the day, be too much of a fan? No, because I think that Steve Cohen looks at baseball as a as a business. I know he I know he is a fan. But I think ultimately it's his businessman instincts are what what rules rules that rules the day for him. And so for instance, if we need to upgrade exposition because we were good last year but not quite good enough and it's just going to cost me money and it's not punitive, why would I not do that? Right? And so I think in his mind Yes, it's fandom based. It's listening to what fans say, but it's not always listening to what fans say. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not. Let's go get JD Martinez at the trade deadline. Whatever, whatever, whatever the circumstance we were making up last year that they needed because they needed a big bat. Like he's not doing those things, but he is doing contemplative things. Like all right, let's make a calculated risk when it cost us, but let's make a calculated risk on bringing in a, a two time Cy Young winner. And you did that with Scherzer, and then it's like, all right, that was good. It just wasn't quite good enough because DeGrom let us down. But all right, let's make another calculated risk and spend a lot of money and bringing in the most recent Cy Young winner, Justin Verlander. And it's a shortest, it's a short term deal. It, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not crippling you five years from now, but it is giving you a real chance to win right now. So I think, yes, he's a fan, and he does the things that you know fans love. But it's also, it's. I think it's very, like, business savvy mm-hmm. as opposed to emotional. Emotional, yeah. yeah it's it's, not it hasn't been emotional. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I don't necessarily think that it's going to become emotional. But the one thing that you have to incorporate in, in the evaluation of Cohen so far, mm-hmm. and it's all all positive, is that he hasn't had any adversity yet. And when highly successful people are are faced with adversity, yeah. And I'm not just in general as a general principle. Generally, they tend to try to do things, um, maybe take on more than they should. But let me let me ask. Well, like what adversity could come? Well, I'll tell you. Just baseball adversity. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. That, that's, yeah. that's it. Think about where the Mets. Mets won 101 games last year, second most in franchise history. Yeah. Outside of the 108 with the 86 Mets, great by all accounts, incredibly enjoyable, awesome season. I know it ended the way didn't end the way Mets fans wanted. But it was really six fun months. Crazy comebacks in Philly. Mm-hmm. I mean, walk-offs, sublime pitching, by, sick catches by Nimmo and center against the Dodgers. Like It really was a good season. Fun, it right? It was fun. Mets feel like they're back. That was last year. But then the way the season ended down in Atlanta, and then with the Padres, out with a whimper. Um, if If things are not quite as... Humming, if they're not humming as quickly as we think that they should this year, yeah, that could be the first little infiltration of adversity. Now that could happen to anybody. It happened to George back in the day. I mean, there were even the Yankees at their apex with the with the dynasty. Not every season you started twenty five and five. You just didn't. Uh, one of the worlds here, I think that would have been the ninety nine season or t- no, that may have been two thousand ninety nine or two thousand. 
Uh, the Yankees just languished in September. They had an abysmal September. I remember sitting there saying, no, they're not going to win the World Series. <laughs> they looked awful. Um, so a, a temporary setback does not mean that you're doomed to to fail for the season. But everything has been positive. Met fans are pumped. Tickets are out, you know, are, are, are going like hotcakes. The new scoreboard, the players that you want, there's just a great vibe. Eventually that vibe's going to be compromised a bit because uh, that's just the ebb and flow of baseball. And when it is... Will he try to do too much? I, you know, I don't. I don't see it because I see him consistently populating his roster with stars. Right? Think about what we talk about regarding um, the the Yankees. Right? Who who are you going to see for the Yankees? It was it was Judge. Mm-hmm. Right? I guess Rizzo. He's now signed a you know a short term deal, short ish, longish, whatever term deal. Perfect for him. He's a perfect Yankee, right? He fits, he fits the role. He's going to be better this year, too, without I, that shift. Agreed. So, you know they shifted him 82% of the time a year ago? 82% wow, I didn't realize that at the time. But he, he he became a guy that I liked watching. Yeah, he feels like a Yankee. Yeah, so so it's like, okay, I want to see Judge. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay, I like Rizzo. I like, you know, the Rizzo, as we yeah, used to call him. him. A couple guys on the on the, on the the hill that you want to go see. Yep, Nasty Garrett. Exactly. Yep. So, but Stevie Cohen, it's like he's populating this team. And he's paying guys like McNeil uh, eventually. As I just, I was just reading how he's going to allow um, Sandy to, uh, not Sandy, um, Epler to handle the Pete Alonso, Pete Alonso extension. extension. As he should. So, yeah, I want to go see if I, if I'm a Met fan, I want to go see the Jeff McNeil. I want to go see Pete Alonso. I kind of really like watching Francisco Lindor. And now you got these two aces on the on the on the hill that are you know. I think league wide icons. Not to mention a Japanese pitcher who's and, got and, some real and, intrigue and here. Sango so that, that walk up gate his, on with when Sanga pitch is going to be something. Yep, with his fork ball. Yeah. His uh, ghost. What did he call it? It's Peter, a ghost ball. What did, what, did, what did Pete Alonso call it? Ghost. Uh, well, they, ghost. They, 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 ghost. Uh, they ghost uh, ghost not, something. I can't well, remember. Ghost what it fork was. ball, right? Well, because they asked him, what's it like? He's like, I don't know. I honestly couldn't see it. I, I don't really know the shape of it. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, yeah, but point being, they've got people that you want to go see. Yeah. The, and the Mets are going to be good this and, year. And I think, you know, and then just wait for Francisco Alvarez to come up. But things are good now. That's not my point. Yeah. I, this is not about but to I illuminate think, but, the good but, but, of the Mets because there's my, a ton. But here, I, the reason I say that is that I feel like that's intentional. Like, he's putting on a show. Like he, I think he knows he's putting on a show. It's why you go get the reigning Cy Young award winner in Verlander. It's why you bring in Max Scherzer. It's why, even if you consider it an overpay, you overpay for Francisco Lindor because it's it's about the show, right? And those guys are going to help you win because they're just really good baseball players. But he, I think he's always going to be about the show. And not that he's, you know, taking lessons from Broadway, but Broadway in New York, you're, you're – you have a, a Tony Award winner, right? You have this this or potential Tony because they haven't won it yet. Potential Tony Award winner It starts to get a little bit stale. People have seen it every now and then. You know what? You go bring in Idris Elba to play some role on. Yeah, it, or you right? slap red uh, boots on Tiki. You say, exactly. "Come on, down, Tiki, let's go." Bud. Exactly. I know. I know <laughs> what that was. What I, I know what that was all about. It was great for me. So you should have seen him in. Uh, you should have seen Tiki on Broadway. Yeah, Kiki Boo too. Oh fun. my God, was awesome. But I get it. Like they needed a little. I still injection. can't believe you did that. They needed a little injection of something before they closed six months or five yeah, yeah, months yeah, later. Five months later. So saying. what? They, hey, Teak, you want to come do it for four, uh, uh, a month and a half? Yeah. Sure. Well, Pam sure. Anderson was in Chicago. That's right. No, no, I, I so know what they do. I they do you. those things, I and I think you. Stevie Cohen is always going to do that. But there's always. not a scoreboard on Broadway. There's a perception on when a show gets a little stale. Yeah. That is subjective. I mean, not that it can't be felt. For the most part, or, in unison. Or the same people have watched it so many times. They're like, all right, I don't need to watch it. How many times do you see a Lion King? No, I, exactly. Yeah. But there, there's not literally a scoreboard outside of, on the overhang on the marquee that says, you know, uh, you know, when Cats used to play. Yeah. You know, Cats 112, uh, <laughs> Phantom of the Opera 97. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, you're right. It's you're a right. little different. Yeah. And, you know, what I find interesting, and it might not become this, the Mets might win the World Series this year, and it only is amplified. But for a man who has rightfully been universally lauded by every Met fan, what happens at the first sign of friction? And there's going to be friction. Number one, it's New York. Number two, it's baseball. Mm-hmm. And baseball's hard, and it's a long, laborious season. I, 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 I wonder when somebody who is that used to winning at everything in life, I wonder the first real prolonged sign of tension if he maybe 
you know what? I know I got my baseball advisor. Screw that. I'm go- I'm doing this. Yeah, overreact. Like, is he going to have a little George in him? We always try to create this, mm. this Steinbrenner-Cohen thread, which I think is ridiculous, because I think Cohen's more sensible, more... I don't know, but just different, and George was great, and George was awful. George was everything. Uh, I don't think he's going to be petulant and and erratic like George. Mm-mm. But just because he doesn't present it outwardly doesn't mean it's not going to be burning inwardly, which could force him at some point to do something he's not showing the signs of doing yet. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's all speculation, but right now I think that Stevie Cohen is handling first the media – well, first, first social media, which when he first bought the team, then the roster and the hires with 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 Buck, and, uh, uh, not Buck, um, yeah, Buck and everybody else, and now the actual media. Like seeing him yesterday, standing or whenever that was, I guess it was Sunday, standing up on the dugout. Oh, I just, love it. It was it's old awesome, school. It's old school. It was old school. Yeah, it was. And, and it was. It's like, dude, that was a holding court. I, I Let's would, shoot I it. Would, I would love to just go just. Chat with you right, right there, uh-huh. right. That that's cool. Not not a lot of. I don't see. You ever see Hal doing that? I don't. See I, I don't think I've ever seen Hal doing that ever. See Cashman doing. I don't think I've seen Hal. I don't see exactly. George did it back in the day. Exactly right. George would address the team <laughs> like they were going out to war. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. Joe's up in Westchester. What up, Joe? How are you today, sir? Hey, how you doing, guys? Can you hear me? All right. Yep, we got you. What's up, Joe? Hey, Joe. Hey, uh, first time calling into your show, and I, I, it's a great show. Man. I appreciate so, you. Uh, I've called into a lot of others, but it's the first time I'm calling you guys. I, I agree with Tiki on Cohen and um, that he that his fandom will not warp his judgment. And I think the perfect example of that is that is the way he handles Correa. Because yeah. for him to walk away, if he was a true fan and he was just wearing his fan hat, he would have said, no, no, I don't care. I want this guy at all costs. I would have loved to have him in the lineup. But the fact that he walked away from him shows that I don't think he's going to make stupid decisions. But now that's a good point, Joe. That's actually a really good point. But that's also rooted purely in finance, uh, and that's something I don't think he'll ever mess up. Not that he's going to be well. He's not going to be per- nobody's perfect. But to me, that's a layup for him because he's a man of numbers. I'm talking about you know we. I'm, I'm just making up a situation where we're scuffling. But we've got two stud prospects who are two years not Alvarez, not 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 those kids. Maybe the next wave of Mets young stars, right? Uh, hey, we're in a mess, and, and let's make a short-sighted move to stabilize yeah. now. I mean stuff like that. You talking about holding the guys down? Yeah, uh, no, Alvarez no, like, hey, I'm going to trade my, 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 I don't know, my switch-hitting center field future Griffey uh, <laughs> for a third starter because there were three and a half games out of the wild card in, in July of 2026. I mean, I'm just making up situations, but well, I you don't, know what? yeah, go ahead. I, I don't think he's going to do that because when I read things about him when he was first taken over the team, he said that he wanted to build from the farm system, kind of like the Astros and the Braves have mm-hmm. done. But he's going to sign free agents to bridge the gap. I understand so that, I but he has yet. But Joe, plan. but Joe, he's yet to be. I, I get that, but he's yet to be criticized, and he hasn't earned any criticism. But when the criticism comes, and it will come, I'm curious how he reacts. I, I what I'm saying is this, Joe. I think, thanks for the call, buddy. I think there's another side of Steve Cohen that he hasn't yet showed us. Which, and what could that be? I, I don't know. Uh, I, but I, I think it's a very interesting. I don't think it's reckless. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's sloppy. Um, I'm not even intimating anything bad, but I think it's far more aggressive than, like, I think he's he's got the ability and a, and a penchant to be aggressive when he needs. You don't get to where he is without being calculated, yeah. brilliant, and aggressive. And when things are good, you don't need to be incredibly aggressive. Yeah. When things go awry, and they will because it's here and it's baseball, that's all I'm saying. I find it very interesting to see how he's wired. Mm-hmm. I don't think that we've seen the entire Steve Cohen. You know, He took over a mess. Nobody liked the Wilpons at this point. The stadium had, it was more like the Brooklyn yeah, Dodgers. It was almost, it was almost yeah. easy. Yes. Yeah, right? Because you were you were just not the Wilpons. <laughs> it's not. This is a horrendous comparison, and it's not even it, it, just to make a point. It's nothing to do with when when um, Adam Silver took over for David uh, David Stern, mm-hmm. and he fired Donald Sterling, it was easy. That was the easiest move in the world. This guy is a racist. This guy is on audio file. You're gone. Yeah. But it created immediate equity, even though it was the absolute right, no nothing to discuss move. I don't think it really would have mattered who took over the Mets after the Wilpons. You were going to be universally loved. <laughs> and now, 
you might not sustain that. Like, say if somebody else bought the Mets a couple of years ago and they were they had a payroll of 165, there'd be an expiration date on that. And that would, yeah. So Cohen, to his credit, has already extended the window longer than maybe others would have. But it's not a window that, that never closes. Eventually, there will be some criticism. Name an owner in this town. Even the Maras at the end. I mean, think about this. Yeah. What owners in this city? You don't. You don't. You don't avoid it. No. You don't avoid it. I mean, Dolan's got more critics than fans. Uh, Will Ponds, they they were detested for a long time. Uh, George Steinbrenner, equal parts amazing and awful. His son is. We're a little bit more benign because he doesn't have that personality, but nobody loves Hal, <laughs> and he certainly gets criticism. We might respect him with certain things. But he gets a lot of shrapnel on sports radio. Do this, do that, spend this, spend that. Why is Boone back? Why is Cash been back? I mean, think about it. Woody Johnson gets pummeled every day. Even Mara. Think about when Tom Coughlin walked off the stage and just stared at him. Like the, the yeah. disconnect there. Yeah. Like so. Well, that was probably the beginning of it. That, yeah. I, I, yes. 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 Honestly, yeah. And but, the Maras are as close as you can get to full fledged reverence. Yeah. With there's no there's without reproach. You just kind of you don't question them. You don't until that that little that they started to just a little bit when you go through three coaches in whatever it was four years. Mm-hmm. Hey, so you're a big Mets fan. What do you think? You think there's another side to Cohen that eventually uh, that eventually you know is uh, un- unleashed on us here? I- I'm curious to see, and I don't mean like firing Buck and bringing him back like the old Billy Martin stuff, but there's a side to to Steve that we have not yet seen. You're a Mets fan. What do you think? See, for me, I think I kind of trust in Stevie right now just because, you know, he's he's a little bit older. I mean, he's he's in his 60s. He's been there, done that in terms of, like, having a big-time money business mm-hmm. and being very involved. And I know a few people that work with him, so I kind of can see how he could get a little too, you know, into business sometimes. Uh-huh. But I, I don't think he's going to make any of those ra- – <laughs> Like it's hard petulant, to say. Uh, rash decisions, yeah. you know, blunt kind of like, all right, Billy, you know, we lost five in a row. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like I don't think he's going to do that. But at the same time, there is a small th- – I'll be lying if I didn't say that. There's a small piece of me that doesn't look at things like when Steven Matz leaves, going out and getting Scherzer. When you get spited on a certain deal, you're going and doing something ten times mm-hmm. you know, bigger. I would be lying if I didn't say that if somebody wasn't there to check him, that I wouldn't be terrified he would be, he would do something even crazy. Okay, all right. 877 337 and Tierney on the fan. Uh, so uh, we'll, we'll keep going with the Cohen stuff for a little bit. Obviously, the uh, the Daniel Jones conversation from the first hour. We've got Yankee tickets coming up next hour and also a chance to, to qualify for our grand prize trip to go down there and watch the Bombers for a couple of days and hang out in Tampa, uh, airfare, hotel, all that stuff as the uh, baseball season 37 days away from opening day. Tiki and Tierney on the fan.